In today's class, we will solve problem number 2. I will read out the question. Find the subtransient currents and line to line voltages at the fault under subtransient conditions when a line to line fault occurs between phase B and C at the terminals of the generator described in problem 1. Okay, so the data of the generator is not given again. So we have to consider the data of the generator given in problem number 1. Assume that the generator is unloaded and operating at rate of terminal voltage when the fault occurs. So let us write down the given data from the first problem. So it is an unloaded generator. The positive, negative and zero sequence reactances are given. Z1 is J.25, Z2 is J.35 and Z0 is J.1. So the generator MVA rating is 20 MVA and kilovolt rating is 13 point kV. So to find out the actual values of the subtransient currents, we calculate the base current by considering the generator ratings as the base values. So base current IB is equal to 1000 into MVAB divided by root 3 kVB. So the whatever formula we have used in problem 1, we can use it here and calculate the value of IB. IB is equal to 836.76 ampere and the generator mentioned in problem 1 is an unloaded generator with its neutral solidly grounded so don't consider EZN so we are asked to calculate the subtransient currents and the line to line voltages okay so let's go to step 1 line to line fault okay so first write down the formula for the given type of fault. So the given fault is line to line fault. So for line to line fault, we have already proved in the derivation that IA0 is equal to 0, IA1 is equal to minus IA2, IF is equal to IB is equal to minus J root 3 IA1 or IF is equal to IB and IB is equal to minus IC, IA is equal to 0. IA1 is equal to EA by Z1 plus Z2, VA1 is equal to VA2, VA0 is equal to 0. So I have written all the formulae related to the line to line fault on an unloaded generator. Step 2, draw the combined sequence network. So since IA0 and VA0 is equal to 0, we don't have the zero sequence network in the combined network. Okay, so we have the positive sequence network and the zero, uh, negative sequence network in parallel because VA1 is equal to VA2 and IA1 is equal to minus IA2 and uh, I have written the values of Z1 and Z2. Then step 3, let us calculate the value for IA1. So for unloaded condition, we have to consider EA, the EM of generated per phase EA is equal to 1 at an angle 0 per unit 1 angle 0 per unit so we have the formula for IA1 substitute and get the answer for IA1 IA1 is equal to EA by Z1 plus Z2 okay there is no zero sequence network included in the combined network so IA1 is equal to EA divided by Z1 plus Z2 substitute the values for EA Z1 Z2 get the answer for IA1 you got it as minus J 1.6667 per unit it can be written as 1.667 angle minus 90 degree per unit in polar form. The next step is to find the subtransient currents ok. So coming to the subtransient currents so as soon as the fault occurs the machine goes into subtransient state. So the currents at the generator terminals as well as the fault current during that state is called as the subtransient currents okay so in the first problem it is a single line to ground fault we had ib and ic equal to zero okay so that is the reason it's an unloaded generator we had ib ic equal to zero so that is the reason why we didn't find ib and ic in the subtransient current calculations and IF is equal to IA, we calculated, calculated only IA and we have taken IA as IF, okay. But here, uh, there is a fault, double line fault in phases B and C. So only IA is 0, there is finite value for IB and IC. So you have to calculate the subtransient currents 
at the generator terminals also okay so i a is equal to 0 from the terminal conditions i b from the matrix we are writing the formula i a naught plus a square i a 1 plus a i a 2 i a naught is 0 we know for a ll fault i a naught is 0 a square is 1 angle 240 substitute i a 1 we got it as minus j 1.667 a is 1 angle 120 and i a 2 is minus of i a 1 okay so minus of minus j 1.667 that is plus j 1.667 so i b equals minus 2.886 per unit then find i c i a naught plus a i a 1 plus a square i a 2 substitute the values and get i c as 2.886 per unit see you are calculating i b and i c because only i a is equal to 0 for an unloaded generator under line to line fault conditions okay so in the previous problem first problem single line to ground fault so i b and i c are 0 so we have calculated only i a but in double line fault we have only i a is 0 so we have to calculate i b and i c okay so now i b and i c are the subtransient currents at the generator terminals okay so after finding generator uh, terminal currents we have to calculate the fault current during the subtransient condition so it can be denoted either as if double dash or if so already from the derivation we have if is equal to ib and ib we got it as minus 2.886 per unit from the previous calculation so if you take only the magnitude it is 2.8886 per unit so this values of the subtransient current or in per unit so multiply by the base current to get the actual values of subtransient current. So IB, IC and IF, the per unit values are multiplied by the base current to get the actual values in amperes. Okay. So you will get minus 2416. It can also be written as 2416 at an angle 180 degree. 2416 ampere can be written as 2416 at an angle 0 degree ampere. Okay. See, remember, only if there is a J operator, you will write it as plus or minus 90. Plus or uh, plus J minus J can be written as uh, plus 90 or minus 90. But here, there is no J operator. It is a negative sign. So, we write minus 2416 as 2416 angle 80 degree or 90 degree. Okay. So, if you have any confusion regarding this, leave the answer as minus 2416 ampere. The next step find is to find out the sequence components of voltages so from the combined network we have found that va0 is equal to 0 calculate va1 using the formula ea minus ia1 z1 ea is 1 ia1 i have substituted z1 is j.25 we got va1 as 0.583 per unit and also we have va2 is equal to va1 is equal to 0.583 per unit okay so after calculating this sequence component of the voltages, calculate the phase voltages VA, VB, VC from the well-known matrix formula. Okay, I have written the matrix of phase voltages in terms of the symmetrical components. So expand and get VA. VA is VA0 plus VA1 plus VA2. On substitution, we will get 1.166 per unit. VB is VA0 plus A square VA1 plus A VA2. And VC is VA0 plus AVA1 plus A square VA2. When you substitute the values, you will get VBS minus 0.583 per unit. And also we have VB equals to VC. Okay, so no need to calculate again for VC. Even if you calculate VC with the formula, you will get the same answer. Because the terminals B and C are shorted. So, both are at the same potential. So, we can write VB is equal to VC is equal to minus 0.583 per unit. So, next step is to calculate the line to line voltages. What is VAB? VA minus VB. What is VBC? VB minus VC. What is VCA? VC minus VA. Okay. So, VAB we got it as 1.749 per unit. If you want to write it in polar form, 1.749 angle 0 degree. So, VCA, VBC we got it as 0, VCA we got it as minus 1.749, it can be written as 1.749 angle 180 degree because the car, uh, voltage, the uh, sign is negative. 
okay so now for cal converting this per unit values into the actual values we have to consider the face value of kvb as the base value okay so face value of the base voltage should be taken because va vb vc ea everything or the face voltages okay so vab is equal to per unit value of vab into face value of the base voltage which is 7.97 we got it as 13.94 kv vbc is zero vca is minus 13.94 kv okay 